Hello everybody, I'm Pearl. I'm Bob. And we are just passing through. And this is our next exit. Come and join us. And you'd be joining us at the Grand Teton Mountains. I don't know if you can see them back there or not. The clouds <laughs> are kind of coming in. But it is an amazing place, huh? We've got a great site right here. And the views are just incredible. Hey folks, I'm going to stop this video right here. If we've learned two things living this RV lifestyle, it's this. Number one, you got to spend at least one winter in Florida and preferably get some time down in the Miami Keys. That is just totally awesome down there. Number two, you got to spend one summer up here around the Grand Tetons and the Yellowstone National Park. This is so totally awesome. And the big difference, when we were in the Miami Keys, we were spending $175 a night for that campground. <laughs> Here, we're spending a goose egg, zero, totally free, boondocking, using our solar. It's just been wonderful. In this video, we're going to show you some of the sites that we got to see. Not a lot. We're, this is not really a travel channel like that. But we're going to show you the RV sites that we found. We got to boondock in, totally free, awesome, with the view of the Grand Tetons every morning popping in our windshield for almost three weeks. It was just, it's great. We weren't sure if we could do it. We've got a big old fat 42 foot Class A motorhome and it don't do so good on dirt roads and bumpy roads. So we were really concerned and I was really concerned, but Pearl was that on steroids. She was not happy at all about taking her RV down these bumpy roads and stuff. So we had to be pretty careful. We did a lot of uh, scoping stuff out. And Joe, the computer guy, he was awesome in helping us find these sites. He is He's a computer guy. So he's on the internet. He's doing his research. He's making lists. And then we'd all hop in the car and we'd drive. Sometimes we'd drive 100 miles to go scope out our next places we wanted to go. So sit back, grab your... Spam. Sit back, grab you some popcorn, a cup of coffee, and let me tell you just where all we've been camping, what we've been up to, and a few hints about maybe how we found these sites. So if you've been watching our videos, you know we started out in Wyoming at a Boondockers Welcome. We went on up into South Dakota to Nomad View and Custer. But all those places we were able to get reservations. And then we went on over to Buffalo KOA and Medicine Lodge reservation. So the, there wasn't a whole lot of stress about that. Some of it was boondocking. Some of those places we had uh, water and electric, but we had reservations. Well, when we left our granddaughter's house down in Riverton, we went up to Moran, just outside of Yellowstone and Grand Tetons, and Joe was up in Cody, Wyoming. He came through Yellowstone and down in met us there in Moran. He stayed in an RV park. We stayed at a uh, campground in the Bridger Teton National Forest called Hatchet. No reservations there. First come, first serve. And all of the campsites are like for 30 foot or less, is what they say but to have a huge overflow lot so we figured we'd fit into that so we went to the overflow lot joe was in the rv park and we were going to meet and spend a couple of days researching the area trying to find us a boondocking spot all right here's our number one secret on how do you find great boondocking sites luck and timing if you notice on the map i showed you a second ago it only listed nine sites and the biggest length they had was like 26 foot or something like that well i don't know what happened but there turned out to be a site 10 as we rolled in here you could see that site uh an empty site on our left well that's number 10 and as we were set we got all set up in the overflow lot joe pulled up and we were talking about our plans and we looked over and said well there's nobody in that site it looks pretty big we went over and stepped it off and it was like 50 foot long or something we was able to pull our RV in there, pull the car straight in there. We had a perfect base camp to do our going and checking out and finding out where we wanted to boondock. So we pulled in there. It cost $12 a night, but with our uh, senior pass, we got it for half price. So $6 a night. And we, Pearl and I stayed there two or three days. And then the ranger station. There's a ranger station right beside 
this uh, hatchet campground we went and talked to the ranger they gave us some real good maps some good suggestions and so we were off well as you can see we weren't the only ones in the area there were lines to get into yellowstone and this is kind of mid-afternoon in the uh, mid-morning time frame the lines were much longer but there were uh, a number of people looking for boondocking sites uh, the advantage we had was the ranger had given us we stopped and got those maps and got some information from him and suggestions and so we were driving the forest service roads looking for boondocking sites and generally oh, south of highway 26 yeah. in the jackson ranger Cheater. area Cheater. they have a five-day limit on how long you can camp in the boondocking sites north of highway 26 it's 14 days in the boondocking sites and the boondocking sites are only in the national forest not in the uh, grand tetons national park or yellowstone national park only in the bridger teton national forest that's where we were looking for boondocking sites but we were striking out we found some but they were either too rough for our rvs or just too far away or something was wrong with them but one of the roads that the uh, ranger told us about was spread creek road just south of Moran and we found it was a brand new area that they had opened up kind of an overflow site and uh, Joe decided to take that and you can see that's him up on the ridge he had a great view of the Tetons he had good internet his satellite TV worked the only problem there was about 12 other RVs in there and generators running anytime you get around very many RVs you're going to be hearing generators and it had a five-day limit but he decided he's going to go ahead and take it because he he only had two days at that rv park he needed a boondock inside so he took that pearl and i were pretty happy with our uh, hatchet campground but then one day we were over at joe's with pearl and i had been out looking on some different forest roads we decided to stop and tell him what we had found and then on the way home pearl said well let's go drive buffalo ranch road one more time because you never know when somebody's going to leave there's a road down there that i part of the lake and we were driving along uh, they had this campsite one that sets up on this ledge it's a perfect view it's it's a real big area and we kept admiring it wanting to get that but there's a big fifth wheel in there and we was driving down we got down to campsite seven and it was open but we didn't have any way to hold it we needed to uh, get back is about five miles away get back to hatchet campground and then get the rv up there and hold it we didn't want to put out chairs and carpet uh to hold it afraid somebody would just take it so we just got lucky we went back real quick we got in the got the coach pearl drove the car and we headed off to our first real boondocking site in uh, the bridger teton national forest it was a little risky. The rough was, road was a little rough. But I gotta say, we both felt it was well worth the effort getting down into campsite number seven. I probably can't even put into words how happy and excited Pearl and I were about finding this spot. We've been talking about coming up here in Wyoming and Montana to boondock in the National Forest. Since our quartzite boondocking rally last January, we've been talking about this and planning for it. And it seems so simple back when we first started planning, but once you get up here, you see how many people there are. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And there's a lot of campsites, but there's a lot of people trying to get in them campsites. So we scored a home run. We were so excited. And we had several days of really enjoying it. Every, uh, every day there was horseback riders coming by in groups of three or four, up to maybe a dozen or so. And they'd come right along the edge of the campground with some beautiful horses. And there's a ranch just down the road from us that was doing these trail rides. And Joe was able to catch this video one day when he was coming over to visit. We thought it was just awesome. But we start thinking, you know, it's a pretty good climb to get out of here and it's all dirt road. That's a lot of weight trying to push up that road. So we started watching the weather forecast because we were really concerned about as much rain as we've seen over the 
we've been up there two months now. Over the two months, it rains a lot. And we can see getting stuck down here in this mud or trying to get out and getting stuck up on the road. And probably about our second or third day, we saw in the forecast that they had severe thunderstorm warnings for the next day. And we started talking and we decided, well, we can get through it. If it gets too wet, we'll just wait till it dries out. But as we got closer and closer, we got up the next morning. And we said, you know, the heck with this. Let's get out of here while the getting's good. We don't want to get stuck down here. And we'll go over and park in that uh, overflow lot beside Joe. So we loaded everything up. We started heading out. And lo and behold, when we got up to the Buffalo Valley Road, that paved road, Pearl's driving the car and I'm driving the motorhome. And when she got when she got to that site one, that fifth wheel had moved. It was empty. And he must have just moved moments earlier because the traffic there, people are RVs are going by all the time looking for spots. So she pulled right in there, I caught up to her, I pulled right in there, and bingo, we're in our second boondocking site here in Wyoming. We are happy campers and Pearl is really happy. She's loving this view. She's loving being off of that dirt road and the space. Let's get the drone up. Let me kind of show you what it looks like. We can always stay a little longer. We don't have a plan. Just let me live a little younger than I really am. We've got nothing here to save us, save us from ourselves. Let's live life like it's made up, jump in the wishing well. Yeah, wanderers, nothing can stop us. I have to agree with Bob. This site is everything we had been looking for in a boondocking spot. I have to agree with you, sweetheart. It's a wonderful spot. Boondocking has been fun. I've been enjoying it all the time now. The view of the Tetons and going through Yellowstone, this has been a great experience and I'm enjoying it. I can't wait to see if our next site is going to measure up. I'm looking forward to it. So come along with us and enjoy the fun. Just as soon as we got parked and set up, I got a hold of Joe and told him that we got the campsite one. And he came, drove over in his car about an hour later. And uh, he said the ranger had just got a hold of him and told him that his five days was up tomorrow and he had to leave. The ranger was going through telling everybody. So he liked the site so much, he said, yeah, I'm coming over today. So he loaded up come over picked up some firewood and we uh the next day once he all got set up we had us a fire joe makes some humdinger margaritas so he made up a big batch of margaritas we we're sitting around the campfire enjoying a beautiful day and lo and behold here come that thunderstorm that was in the forecast it didn't look like it all day but about four o'clock it started uh get clouding up and then by six or seven it was raining cats and dogs but that didn't slow us down a bit <laughs> All you saw was... <laughs> Cheers, guys! <laughs> oh, you're so welcome, baby. Thanks for joining us. Give me that. You see the rainbow, that baby? That is awesome. I saw the rainbow. Okay. Wow. That's because we kept the fire going up the atmosphere and made her double All right, rainbow. you guys, look over this way and say hi. I'm going in. I'm going in. It's you getting it, me. <laughs> no, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous, guys. I've got a dry chair over there if you want to come sit down, baby. A dry chair? Yeah, my big recline. You can have mine. I'll take that for So these campsites are up on what's called Buffalo Valley Road, and it's a restricted camping area where you can only stay in one of 26 parks and this here is site number one where we're at and then site number seven is just right down the road but it goes on for a long ways uh i think it's five miles seven miles on a paved road and all the campsites are right off the road as you can see we got a really it's really big campsite 
we got to do a little bit of maintenance on our RVs. Joe greased his RV. And then we're only like five miles from the Grand Tetons and 30 or 40 miles from the south entrance of Yellowstone National Park. So it was a perfect place to go and see all these sites. We saw wildlife, we saw a lot of buffalo. We saw this one moose out in this meadows. It was super cool. And then going up to Yellowstone, we didn't we didn't get out and uh, walk the trails any because we took Tinker with us every time and you can't take your dog on any of the trails in national parks and crowds there were crowds everywhere it uh, it was pretty enjoyable we got a little app that as you drive through it'll uh, come on and talk about the di what happened in that area or what to look for the different hot springs and you can't actually trails see and waterfalls so it was just a totally wonderful place we enjoyed it so much and we weren't sure if we would ever come back. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Yellowstone and the Grand Tetons? I give it two thumbs up. I do too. Two thumbs up. Boondocking and the Berger Teton National Forest? Thumbs up. Yeah, four thumbs up. Great that time. has worked out great. It's been the great. sites have been better than our wildest streams, I believe. It's been awesome sites so far. And we got a new couple. We're on the west side of the Yellowstone now yeah. and we got a new couple that come over to stay with us for a few days I'm not gonna tell you who they are but it's great having them with us it is it is and uh, I think that pretty well covers it for the east side of uh, Yellowstone and the Grand Teton I think so all right so until we see you guys again next time keep, keep the wheels rolling, rolling. stay safe. safe we'll see you at the next exit bye-bye bye-bye folks, bye -bye, folks. <laughs> that's good okay Mm-hmm.